windy day. Picked up my fifth wheel from service. Is towing this fifth wheel on a windy day better than towing with my late great Pro Pride Hitch collection? Let's find out. So according to weather people, it's roughly 25 mile an hour sustained winds, 30 to 40 mile an hour gusts, although I don't think it's 40 mile an hour, it's probably more like 20 mile an hour sustained winds, and let's call it 20, 25 mile an hour gusts, 25 mile an hour gusts. Anyway. So the question is, you read the forums and everyone compares towing a travel trailer with a fifth wheel. And then the comments are, night and day difference towing a fifth wheel compared to a travel trailer. Well, let's break that down a little bit. I'm gonna put a big asterisk there. And I'm gonna say, not necessarily. First of all, the trailer I'm pulling is a Grand Design Reflection 278BH. It's loaded right now and it weighs approximately 9,500 to 10,000 pounds. I've now scaled it, but I know roughly what a crap that we fill our campers with away from our previous campers. And it's all the same crap that's in that stuff. So I know that's about what it's going to weigh. I'm towing it with a Chevy 2500 gas 6.6 .6 motor no reason for diesel towing this amount of weight i would say diesel is 14,000 pounds and up for a um your your trailers hate on me all you want but there's just zero reason you need the torque and all the maintenance and all the other crap and the expense that comes with a diesel for towing anything under that this truck obviously again it's less than 10,000 pounds, but she's purring along, pretty quiet, pretty easy. So let's talk about the movement and the towing dynamics of this versus a travel trailer. So obviously I pulled travel trailers with half ton trucks. I also pulled travel trailer with an F-250 with a 6.2 gas engine. Without getting into a Chevy Ford battle, this Chevy 6.6, this is a 2020, 2500 and it completely destroys my 2018 F-250 with a 6.2. It's not even a comparison. This is more comfortable by far. The torque band is better. Obviously a fifth wheel attaches to the bed of the truck with putting the weight over the, the axle. And when you have a windy day like this, see if you can see any of the trees or grass moving kind of hard to see the trees moving because there's no leaves when you have a windy day like this you do get movement you do get push it kind of moves you around as a solid unit now i will say that that same sensation is nearly identical to the sensation when you would use a pro pride or an hensley designed hitch that's kind of the beauty that they uh, claim about the pivot point projection so it projects that pivot point forward to make it feel like a fifth wheel so the question is does it actually feel like a fifth wheel well i can assure you that it does feel like a fifth wheel i am literally towing a fifth wheel we own a fifth wheel i've towed it for a few hundred miles while i haven't had it for multiple seasons like i have my other hitches i've towed it enough to know that the feeling and the sensation is almost the same So my claim is towing a fifth wheel and using a travel trailer with a pro pride hitch has very similar feeling. So let's break that down a little bit. Let's talk about then why you'd get a fifth wheel over a travel trailer or vice versa. One of the biggest claims again, like I mentioned is, and you read Facebook, you read the groups, you read forums, Whatever, everyone always says a fifth wheel pulls better than a travel trailer. And I would say without a doubt that is true. However, 
when you compare a travel trailer using the ProPride hitch, again, like I mentioned, that equalizes that sensation out dramatically and makes them very comparable. Now, if you compare a fifth wheel to a traditional friction hitch, such as a Fastway E2, such as a Equalizer, such as a Blue Ox, such as any of those other ones, it's gonna be a, a significant difference, I will say, because you still have that pivot point on the ball, because any of those hitches do not lock out that pivot point and project it forward three feet, basically to give the sensation like it's over an axle versus hanging off the rear of your truck. So you don't get that kind of wiggly jiggly feeling that a ball gives you when you're using a ProPride. And you certainly don't get that jiggly feeling with the fifth wheel with all the weight. For reference, the pin weight of my trailer is roughly 1,500 pounds, I would guess. Uh, pushing down, it does sit on the GM Brothers. It does sit a few inches behind the axle. The bed is a six foot 10 bed. The payload capacity of this particular truck is about 3,500 pounds, according to the door sticker. So why would you get a travel trailer? Like, well, I missed it. Why would you get a travel trailer over a fifth wheel or vice versa? Why did we ditch travel trailers and our fifth camper here is a fifth wheel? How appropriate, huh? Well, the simple question is more space, uh, more usable space for the same footprint it takes up. And the floor plans are a little bit better with more features, more storage, etc. So what I mean by that is a travel trailer has a hitch that's roughly three feet long that adds to the overall total length of the trailer so if your trailer is like our last one say a 2400 bh uh, imagine uh, grand design imagine then your living space is approximately 24 feet but your total occupied space that that trailer would take up on a site for example is about 29 feet whereas on a fifth wheel it goes up the living space goes up over the hitch so therefore you can um, use that as livable space so this camper is 34 feet long and you, it's a full 34 feet if this were a travel trailer this would need about a 37 to 38 foot spot just to sit in to have a similar amount of living space the other thing is not only does it occupy uh, less footprint for the amount of living space you get but you can also um, back your truck under it so you can take even more or, or rather even less footprint on a campsite. So what I mean by that is you can put the tailgate down and back your truck under the pin box and therefore you're kind of overlapping the camper with the truck so you can squeeze into a little bit tighter spot. So that's one of the bigger advantages of that. The other one is usually your, your basement compartment space is a lot bigger for storage on this particular model it's one of the reasons we chose this one you can see the basement storage in front is pretty typical but then you get this large rear storage in the back um, which really sets this one apart now there are travel trailers that have this for example the grand design imagine 2910 bh does have a rear hatch like this isn't nearly as large um, but but there are models out there that, that get some of these features so in general there's more storage space in the basement and there's also more storage space inside in cabinetry as you can see here the heights of the cabinets are just much taller you get more vertical height um, and then the general feeling of the, the space is just more grand and large another big pro is the ease of hitching and unhitching the fifth wheel so with this particular fifth wheel and most of them on the market you simply hitch up Ours is this Anderson hitch where it's a raised goose, gooseneck ball adapter or goose ball adapter. Simply back under the back under the trailer. You come in here to this um, control panel. You push a button and lowers it down onto the ball. And you come and twist the lever. You push this other button and it raises all the jacks. And then you're on your way. To set it up, you just back in, you come in, you drop your jacks, and then you re reverse that process. You push a button and it lifts it off the ball, you drive out, and then you hit this auto level button here, and it levels. And while it's leveling, it'll take a few minutes, 
You can go crack a beer and watch it, and then you're good to go. No sweating, no effort. Now, with that being said, a Pro Pride is very easy to unhitch as well and hitch up. It does take a little getting used to, it does take a little practice, but you can do it. However, from my experience of doing both, hitching up this fifth wheel is still easier by far than messing with a travel trailer. Plus you don't have a hitch bar like this that breaks your shins in half. That's a good thing, that's a compliment by the way, sort of. So then you ask, well it sounds like a fifth wheel is awesome, so why would I ever consider having a travel trailer then? Well, a bunch of, a bunch of reasons also, a lot of it comes down to your tow vehicle. Obviously you can start pulling a travel trailer with much smaller vehicles, starting from a mid-sized SUV all the way up to as big of a truck as you want to get with most people towing mid-sized travel trailers, let's call it 25 feet to 35 feet with half ton trucks. Um, and then once you get above 33 to 35 feet, you really want to start getting into your heavy duty truck territory to pull those anyway. But obviously with most fifth wheels, you really want to have a heavy duty gas truck at minimum to pull one of these. Now I know this particular model, the Grand Design 278BH is advertised as half ton towable. There are plenty of guys that tow these uh, 150 series models with their half tons. But I can assure you uh, today on a day like today with the wind pushing around and the way this is moving today, I am very happy I have a, a 7,000 pound truck pulling this and not a 5,200 pound F-150 like I used to have. So back to why I would buy a travel trailer then over a fifth wheel. Well, the biggest reason is if um, if you want to stay with a half ton, then you have more options there, way more options as far as different trailers you can have. Um, check my videos for some of these other ones. Here's some other floor plans that we debated. We debated this 2910BH, like I mentioned earlier. Obviously the Grand Design 2800BH is a very popular model. If you read the groups and the forums, both of these models um, is kind of a 50-50 mix of pull with half ton, pull with three quarter tons, and that's where the Pro Pride comes in for sure. You throw a Pro Pride on the back of your half ton truck, and assuming you have the payload and other stuff, that's a great equalizer. I have all the confidence of using one of those. Uh, using a Pro Pride to pull one of those uh, little bit longer trailers. I did for many years. We pulled a Rockwood, it weighed about 8,500 pounds, and it was about 34 feet long, which is right in the wheelhouse of most of these longer uh, travel trailers. So that, that's one big reason is you can have a, a little bit smaller truck as a daily driver. Now this truck is not my daily driver. I have a, a uh, SUV that I use I actually got rid of my half ton truck since I have this truck so this can do big boy truck stuff like it's doing right now and then I have my uh, daily driver which is a Jeep Grand Cherokee so watch for that video I'll do a little real world review or raw raw review like I have on some other vehicles um, so look out for that one anyway so from a size standpoint gives you more options another reason you get a travel trailer is cost they typically uh, start out and cost significantly less than most fifth wheels do. Fifth wheels can start anywhere from, from mid 30s, upper 30s, and climb all the way into well above 100 to $200,000. Whereas a travel trailer can start low and mid teens, and most of them top out around forty-five to $55,000 for more of your luxury, uh, larger size travel trailers, for example, um, Cougars and Grand Design Reflection travel trailer line. Those are going to be in that, that ballpark. But most of those, you do need a three-quarter ton to tow, especially Grand Design Reflection travel trailers. Uh, I would still certainly use a Pro Pride hitch, of course, but those suckers are all eight to 9,000 pounds dry and about 35, 36 feet in length starting out and go up from there. So from a budget standpoint, um, there's a lot more options there. Another reason you'd get a travel trailer over a fifth wheel, and it's something that's often overlooked, 
is the steps. Obviously, there's more steps in a fifth wheel. You have to walk up and down on the inside to either go to a living room or a kitchen or a bedroom, depending on your layout. Um, and traditionally, there's at least one or two more steps to get up into uh, the fifth wheel from the ground. So there are steps inside if you have bad knees, if you're older. So that's kind of the, the big reasons I would say you would consider a travel trailer over a fifth wheel. And if you still want the ideal towing performance, then you certainly look at a ProPride hitch. But to answer the root question, is a fifth wheel better tower than a travel trailer? Yes, it certainly is, no doubt. Is a fifth wheel a better tower than a travel trailer with a ProPride? I would say not necessarily. I would say it's a very similar towing experience, a very similar feel. So if you really like a travel trailer floor plan and some of the benefits of a travel, travel trailer, then I would absolutely get a travel trailer with a ProPride hitch and kind of enjoy a win-win for your particular situation. So there you have it, my opinion. Obviously a fifth wheel is, is what we chose to go. We have no regrets. We like all the pros I mentioned. Um, the Pro Pride was a fantastic hitch. If for whatever reason I go back to a travel trailer, we'll buy a third hitch for that. I will always recommend it to anybody towing, I'll say 25 feet or under for sure. Um, you can probably consider something else, but 25 feet and over for sure, do a Pro Pride hitch. And um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Go check out some of my other videos. Please like and subscribe. And stay posted for, for new camper reviews and other information. Thanks.